From WLWT, this is Issues. Hello, welcome to Issues. I'm Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney of Sesh Communications in the Cincinnati Herald. Oh yeah, we have a whole lot going on today. A little later, we're gonna talk to Tammy Westmoreland, who uh, is doing a special, a special tribute to her son, uh, who was a victim of cerebral palsy. So you're, you're gonna wanna hear her story and hear about her nonprofit and all the great things she's doing. We're also gonna talk to a former Miss Black Cincinnati and the current Miss Black Teen Cincinnati, and you'll see what their connection is. Uh, first, we're, and I should say to Michael Bobo is here, so yay, we're so happy to have her here today. Uh, first, we're gonna talk to Miss Doris Brown about the Lucille Chenault Senior Ball, which looks like so much fun. Welcome, Miss Brown, it's so good Thank to have you. you. Good to be here. I know, <laughs> I just, you know what, you do such a great job with this ball. When we see the pictures, everybody's out there dancing. Yeah. And okay, so let's go back. Okay. Tell us about Lucille Chanel, because she sounded like she was a real powerhouse. Yes, yeah, she was. A little ball of dynamite, we called her. Yes. And um, if she would be 120, I think, this year, if she was alive. Oh, my goodness. And she fell and injured herself on a boat ride and ended up in a nursing home. And be, while she was there, she met a lot of people and they didn't have relatives and some had relatives but they didn't come to see them so they felt very lonely right and so they told her said well you know we wish we could find one place to go one day out of the year have a ball they wanted to go to the Netherlands Hilton but at that time uh -huh. they didn't have any ha handicap uh, accessibility oh, okay. yeah so she, uh, when she called Mr. Mallory, William L. Mallory Sr., yes. and told him she wanted him to help her get that ball started, and he did. Wow. He helped her to get it started. So now, now, now how help. many years ago was that? This is the 44th year. Oh my goodness. 44 years. Are you kidding? Yes, wow. 44. And so when Miss Chenault passed, you took it over. How did you end up getting involved? Well, I'm, I'm a board member of the um, Senior Citizens Task Force through Model Cities. Right. That's how the program started, through the task force for the Model Cities program. And so then she asked me to, to coordinate. So I have coordinated every year, even when she was alive. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So, so you've been working on it how long, Miss Brown? Uh, 44 years this year. Oh, so you've been working on it since <laughs> the beginning? 44 years. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So how, what kind of changes have you seen? Because it's a Duke Energy Convention Center now. I mean, it's huge. Yes, and, yeah. yes. Well, we were at, originally at Cincinnati Convention Center until Duke took it over so we we had gone through a lot of changes because nursing homes have made changes right a lot of them have consolidated and they're going on out or something so we don't know where a lot of the people are that we used to have so our, our crowd has gone down a little but we have had as high as 1500 that's fantastic. Yeah. And so is there transportation for the balls? Or yes. do you go to, because I remember we talked about this before, I thought you had buses that went to the nursing homes. Yes, we have to pay for the transportation for them to come uh, and to go back. And um, Peterman uh, usually does a very excellent job. They've been Wonderful. with us for 44 years. Wow. And First Student has done quite a few years for, with us too. So the, wow. those two companies will be doing it. And so, okay, so let's look. So Jeff has some photos to show us. What's going on here? What What are these ladies Those doing? Those are the tap dancing grandmothers, oh and they my are just excellent. We they're, they're not in really, mini skirts. They <laughs> are, and they tap dance all over the place. They wow, are, they, are just they do not look like grandmothers either. Right, oh, and, and Mr. that is Mr. Mallory. Mr. Mallory. Oh, he loved he to jitterbug, him. and anybody he could grab, he they, he he would get them, and they'd get out there and jitterbug. And you can see this is a real dance. So yes. people are out there. Are out oh, there look dancing. at this gentleman. He's got his cane and he oh. is cutting the rug, as I said. Yes, say. yes. Oh, wow. Oh, that's Miss Hurt. She passed away, but boy, oh. they get all the way down to the floor with yeah, that. Yeah, she looks cane. like she's about to put some moves on there. Wow. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that is so wonderful. Yes. So now the dance include. Does it include dinner and dancing? Tell us. Tell it us includes, about the whole evening. They are going to get a delicious hot meal served to them uh, with silverware, and and waiters and waitresses. Then they're going to have, be entertained by, uh, we're going to have Ed Thomas, the, the jazz oh, saxophonist. Oh, Ed Thomas. Oh, yes, and, and there are some other people coming from the Performing Creative Arts. Wow. They are going to do some songs like The Temptations and different, different oh, groups. They can, wow. They're going to sing some of their songs. 
And um, then Willie is going to be the DJ. He's going to. Oh, will we see? Oh, yeah. yeah no we, wonder everybody's up dancing. Right. Yeah. We weren't able to get Elvis, so he's going to dedicate a certain amount of time to his songs, and they are going to oh. just enjoy. <laughs> they love Elvis. Oh, I that think. is so yes. good. Yeah. Well, yes. El El Elvis will be in the house. So yeah. Everybody yeah, should look for him. <laughs> <laughs> he'll be there somewhere. Yeah, he'll be there. So tell us the date and how do we get tickets and also how can people help? So let's let's start with dates. When okay, is, when the is date is going to be a Wednesday, J Wednesday, July the 11th, 12 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the Duke Energy Center, Hall A and B, first floor. Donation $6. Uh, for 16. more, sixteen, sixteen dollars, right, sixteen dollars. Okay. <laughs> okay. And you can call me at two four two three three four one if you have questions. Okay. So five one three two four two three three four one. Three three four one. Can people buy tickets at the door, or do you prefer in advance? We prefer not to do it at the door. Right. We've worked very, very hard to stop that because it's hard to keep up with money and stuff down there. Right. And just to um, order the dinners, people don't right, get that. When people right. Show we, up. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. We have to make sure, you know, the, the extras that I have, I gotta have those to make sure right. that they can take care of someone. And then Extra. for transportation, so the nur can the nursing homes call you because they might have groups of the you know all nursing homes are invited, right? Yeah, we invite everybody that we can. Right, and, and we seniors too. You don't have to be in a nursing home. Right? No, you don't. No, okay. seniors come who live on their own too. Okay, right. And senior centers and so forth, they all come. Okay, and so yeah. and you guys get transportation together through Peterman and First Student, right? Which is so wonderful. So we just right. want people to make sure. Let's give us that phone number again. Okay, it's five one three. Two four two three three four one. Okay, five one three two four two three three four one. Thank you, Miss Brown. Thank okay. you for your forty four years of Thank work. You. That's just amazing. Yes. Oh my goodness. It gets better each year, you yeah, know. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a little so hard, much. but it's still worth it. Oh, uh, you are you're just so beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you for doing that. All right. Stick with us. To Michael will be here. We're going to talk to Tammy Westmoreland in just a sec. Thank you. Welcome back. I'm Tamichael Bobo. I'm here today and I have the honor to speak with Miss Tammy Floyd Westmoreland, author and CEO of Cute Cosmetics. Hi. How are you today? I'm awesome. Thank That's you. amazing. <laughs> I just I'm very excited to speak with you today. I want to know a little bit about your journey and how you became an author and began your company. I became an author and started my company due to my son. I had a son that um, was born with cerebral palsy, which is a congenital disorder of movement, muscle tone, or posture that is caused by a loss of oxygen to your brain. So you have brain damage. Um, I had him at 15 years old. He actually passed away seven years ago when he was 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And so I had my daughter 11 months later. So she never got to meet her brother. My husband also had a son who had cerebral palsy that passed away. So she has two brothers in heaven with this disorder. So Cute Cosmetics is a way for us to come together as mother-daughter, raise awareness about cerebral palsy, and be able to give back a percentage of our proceeds to families affected by cerebral palsy to get help and support through finances, um, just mental and physical, because I didn't get a lot of support when I had my son. So it's just my way of giving back. And I learned that I was supposed to be the voice that my son never had. So I'm just trying to walk in my purpose and make my son proud. I think that's an amazing way to honor your son. What Thank was your you. son's name? His name was DeJounte. 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 And what was your husband's son's name? Jordan. Jordan. We're going to give them their voice today. Yes. Thank Jordan you. and DeJounte. Yes. We're excited that you're able to still have hope within this and be able to help people the way you may not have been helped. And so within some of those struggles that you experienced, what were some of the things you found out about cerebral palsy? Um, there's definitely, definitely a different severity of cerebral palsy. With my son, he couldn't walk, he couldn't talk. 
So I got, I was faced with a lot of different challenges, a lot of no's from the government that wouldn't assist me, and you will read that in my book. So I had to make some hard life decisions. And so through my nonprofit, which I just started in April, their voice of Greater Cincinnati, I'm able to be able to raise funds that are not covered by insurances and be able to help these families not go through some of the same things that I went through. So I'm just, again, it's about me being there, being that voice for not just my son, but many others that are affected by cerebral palsy mm -hmm. and other disabilities. Like I don't wanna just stop at cerebral palsy. I wanna be able to help everyone, whatever I can do, that's what I want to do. And so with Cute Cosmetics, we've been doing a seven city tour. Starting next month in July 14th, we'll be in Chicago, just trying to raise more awareness about cerebral palsy as well as raise more money. And we're going to donate to each local charity in each different city to be able to give back and help other families. Are there ways that um, you, how can we also find out some of the other cities you're going to be in? It's all on my website, cutecosmetics.com. You can look that up. We have, and then of course we're on social media, on Instagram, everything's on there under Cute Cosmetics 1. We're on Facebook. I post a lot on Facebook under Cute Cosmetics by TNT. So you can find us on all social media. <laughs> and I'll say that Cute Cosmetics is spelled Q-U-T-E. Q-U-T-E with a Q. Yep. Q -U -T -E. And why did you choose a Q? My daughter was one and she loved lip gloss and she would always compliment others and you're cute, that's cute. And so I asked my sister, I said, how, what if we change the C to a Q and do cute cosmetics and make it cute for a cause? And you can help raise awareness that way. Cute for a cause. And so we should also say the name of your book, the title is Life After. It's Life Before and Life After before and Cerebral after. Palsy, We Are Their Voices. And you will find my story about everything I went through, as well as my husband wrote a piece of his story. I also had a cousin who had a son that had oh. cerebral palsy that passed away. Oh, I'm getting emotional. I and um, you get to hear my mom's side, as well as two, my sister and two friends. I wanted to give it an overall perspective of people that you are with every day who maybe don't know how to relate or don't know what yeah. to say or don't know what to feel. So it, I wanted to give that. It seems that this will also help people, as you said, that are going through other disabilities and parents that have to deal with their children that's experiencing this and, not, and also for the children that may not have that voice. Or even if the ones who've experienced loss, the how to live life after Afterwards. death. That is amazing. Thank you. And we also want to just mention that you have the their voice because you have you're wearing a beautiful shirt today. Thank you. <laughs> and your shirt says to uplift, inspire, and support their voice, families affected by disabilities. Mm -hmm. And how do people reach you if they have a specific, do they have to fill out applications or what's that process Again, like? Again, they can reach me through um, social media, email. Um, I put that on, it's on my website. Again, cutecosmetics.com. You can reach me that way. Um, I have business cards I pass out. I have no problem. You can call me, 513-372-1888. Okay, repeat the number one more time for us. 513-372-1888. 513-372-1888. Yes. Okay, we just want to make sure because there's some people listening on the radio so that they can make sure they get the number so okay. they can contact you. And when you go out into the community, you give information there as well. Correct. Do you have anything coming up in the community outside of your um, tours? Because that's in Chicago next it's month, It's in right? Chicago next month, and we're going to hit each city. And we won't be back here until April, which will be the second annual fundraiser for Their Voice. And we're going to make that a big thing and help pray to God that we raise so much money to be able to help so many families because it's definitely needed. Um, right now, we're helping a family in Wisconsin. It's just the small things. We're just sending her yes. baby wipes for a year, you know, just little things that we can do to help families that are affected, like things that people just don't think, don't about, think about on a daily basis. Because mm -hmm. the struggle of paying for it and then also still living your and life living your day life. to day, paying rent and paying bills and getting food and everything exactly. is difficult it's and you're going to be able hard. to help people that way. It's definitely hard and hopefully be able to give more support to the families and to the parents physically and yes. get them some type of help because it's a lot to take care of a child. Like I was small, my son was 15. Yeah. And so just to be able to be physically fit and continue to be mentally stable to take care of these kids and try to have as much support around you as possible because you need it. Again, people don't get it. Yes. And you might have kids, people might have a kid and they still don't understand the challenges and the struggles and the emotional effect okay. that it has on us. So. Well, we're definitely gonna have you back in April, to speak before April to speak about the um, annual fundraiser. Yes. Thank you so much for being Thank with me today, having Tammy. Me. We Thank appreciate you. it. We'll be right back with Jan Michelle Lemon Kearney.
Welcome back. Okay, this is so exciting because we have a mother-daughter duo here. Let me introduce the 2018 Miss Black Teen Cincinnati, Jayla Bolt. Yay, Jayla. <laughs> Thank you. And the Thank youngest, you. you're only 13 years old. Yes. And you just, you, she took the whole pageant, the whole world by storm. You've just been everywhere. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But your mom, Angela Grayson, you were the 1995 Miss Black Cincinnati. Correct. And then you won all around. In 2014. Yeah, because all the different years, um, the Miss Black Cincinnati from all the different years. Years, um, mm -hmm. Competed and okay. you won that too, and so and yeah. so you're but you're the first mother daughter team, so you grew up hearing about pageants. Yes, I, I mean ever since I was little, it's been everywhere. My mom she talks about it. She helps out with the pageants, so I got to go sometimes. I would sit down and I'd watch, and I was like, oh, I want to do that. And Mr. Humphreys, of course, it wasn't one for. 12 and under right and he was like I'll make you one I'll make you one but then I got old enough so I did the teen one and oh, so you nice. just barely got in with the age limit at 13 yeah. <laughs> and then you won I mean and the competition is stiff because all the girls are just you know they're talented they're smart they're beautiful right. um, and you got up there and you did that poem that oh my goodness about you know why did God make me black and you know people were just crying I mean, and it was beautiful. I mean, it was just like such a, you know, such a, I think a self-esteem booster for for yeah. young girls. And, you know, how, how did you end up choosing that piece? Um, well, we looked at a lot of stuff, really. My mom, she was like, oh, you could do this and you could do this. And we asked my grandmother, everybody was helping out. Then my cousin was like, well, did you check online? So we looked it up. I saw the black prayer. I read it. And I was like, this is, this is amazing. So yeah. I showed my mom, everybody loved it. So it was just a matter of, really crafting it and getting everything together so that it would be a good piece, not just speaking. And you know what, and I'm just sitting here thinking, man, she's got stage presence. Angela, <laughs> you're you're the mom. How did you how did you raise her like this? I mean, she's just phenomenal. I don't know if I did it on purpose. I mean, <laughs> I make sure that she understands you're always on display. People judge you by how you speak. They judge you by how you walk. So I'm always on her about those kind of things. But when it came to the pageant, I really had to take a back seat because it's like, I can't do the pageant for you. It right. has to be something that's inside of you that you really want. And so probably after like a month, um, that's when I began to realize, okay, Angela, this has to be her, not you. <laughs> right. You know, I can't tell you. Go in there and practice. When I was in the pageant, I walked around the kitchen with heels on washing dishes. Did you really? Oh, most definitely. <laughs> you know, but she had her own way of doing things. And she's one of those children. She's been watching me the whole entire time. Mm -hmm. So even though I don't recognize I've been on display, she's been watching, taking her own little mental notes and... And she that's, that's a good lesson for off. parents, right? Yes. Like your children watch what you do. You can say a lot, but they're watching what you do. And that's what she's done. And you're a positive role model for your daughter, and you, yes. you've done Thank so you well. Mom. You're welcome. I, I know. Try to be. So, 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 so what did the pageant do for you? Um, the pageant really, well, believe it or not, I don't really think I'm an outspoken person. Really? Not, I, can't I mean, believe that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> quite. Um, I feel maybe it's just being out and not knowing people and I feel like I'm, I'm quiet so maybe the pageant I think it opened up doors for me seeing all these other girls showing what they have and I was like I need to I need to do it because no one else can no one else can do it for me right I had to put myself out there I had to try harder than just smiling it's not just smiling it's you not have to yeah it's really it takes work Right, I'm, you know, it does. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, um, it's not a beauty pageant. You know, right, all no. of you all are beautiful, but you're really judged on things like poise, intelligence. You have to answer these questions, and we have some pictures um, that are going across the screen with different scenes from the, from the pageant. But you have to answer questions on the spot. Um, you know, you have to speak to the audience. Oh, that's gorgeous. That's, yeah, with Thank your crayon you. on. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's really, there's a lot to it. There is. It's more than just trying to make sure you don't fall in your shoes. <laughs> right, yeah, right. You can't just, like, prance around looking good. I mean, right. you have to come up with a lot of poise. You have to think on your feet. You have to speak out. Yeah, and the questions, the question at the end where they ask you and you have to think on the spot. It's not practice. It's not rehearsed. You have to really come up with something or right. else. Mm. <laughs> and that's actually a really good skill to have. It is, being able to speak extemporaneously. Right. That's right, yeah. definitely. 
And so now, and so, and I, and I have to say that you've been a big hit. You were at, at the Bright Awards, Nefertiti, the, uh, the Sigma Pi Phi yes, fraternity. I mean, everybody's talking about you. So, but, you know, let me just switch over because the okay. Miss Black Cincinnati pageant is coming up. Right. So, Andrew, tell us what are the criteria for right. that? So, it's coming up in November. The date hasn't act actually been set. Okay. But the criteria is you need to be at least 17, um, a senior in high school or older. If you are in school, you have to have a 2.0 GPA. If you're not, of course, you at least have to have your GED or your high school diploma. Um, single, never married, never having children, and a natural born female. Those are the criteria. You need to make sure you have a performing talent uh, because you have to have a talent when you perform. And some of the talents are, some are singers, some are dancers, um, some do poetry. Um, so it, it's really, the talent is, is really widespread. It's wide open. It really is. It's not that you're locked into one. Right. So it could be something unique as long as it's something that you can perform on the spot and be able to showcase it. And I think, you know, I think Mr. Humphreys and also we should say the um, Cincinnati Black Theater Company, Don Sherman, um, together do a really good job with these pageants. There's a lot of training and practice oh, that most goes definitely. into it. Yeah. They trained for about six weeks. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of work. It's yeah. about two hours of practice, you know, once a week. You come in and you get that training and it's diligent because the goal is not just to put on a pageant, but to make sure we teach you how to present yourself That's well like to that. other people. Yeah, right. you were saying what, Jayla? Um, just to make sure you're presentable as a young woman and that you showcase yourself in a way where you feel respected and you feel beautiful. That everybody sees you as who you want to be seen as. That is That's so right. fantastic. Well, we're so excited to have both of Thank you. Thank you so, so much. So to get information about the upcoming pageant. Right. To get information, you can call RLH Pageants. Um, the phone number is 513-368-8108. Okay, 368-8108. And here it is up on the screen. Right. Jeff has another number up here also, 513-241-6060. Oh, that's the Cincinnati Black Theater Company. Right. Okay, 513-241-6060. And they should also know we're always recruiting for the teen pageant. It'll be coming up again in April when Jayla gives up her crown. Oh. So who knows? You could be crowned the next <laughs> Miss Black that Teen Cincinnati. Cincinnati. All right. <laughs> Mother-daughter dynamic duo. We'll be right back in just a moment. I also want to thank Alexis Rogers. She's so phenomenal. She did the program last week. Have a great week. Stay safe. Stay positive.